Hi everyone and welcome to this Rhino tutorial. My name is David Cathetti and in this video I wanted to share an important trick and command to know if you do 3D printing. And the reason for this is uh, sometimes we spend a lot of time modeling um, details and a lot of that detail can be used with a texture or can be created using a texture. So let's just go here to our default layer and I'll create a circle. I'll start at zero and I'll make it a diameter of 100 and I'll take the circle and extrude it up by clicking on the circle and extruding it up by 100. Now that we have this cylinder, I'll go to shaded mode and this is where we are going to apply the texture. Now to actually see the texture uh, and before we do the displacement, I actually like to go to rendered mode and apply a material. So we'll go here on the materials tab. And if you don't have this, type in materials and you'll have this tab pop up. And now we'll go to materials. We'll do a plus sign here and we'll go to a custom material. I'll call this mat one for material one. And I would like to change the color at the bottom here where it says textures to the texture that I want to use for doing my uh, the design here, right? So I have downloaded a bunch of different materials and there are different kinds that I can use. So I'm just going to pick one here that I feel like it looks interesting. Um, and let me open this up first and show you the information that's inside of this. And this is a pretty high quality texture. So this will also make it a little bit harder, but let's, uh, it'll make it harder on the computer to read. So let's go here and open it up. So this is what that texture looks like. I will zoom into it. So you can see how much detail is actually here. And all of this will actually be reflected in the 3D model. As you can see, we have a lot of like roughness kind of things here. And that's gonna be awesome. So we can so you can add all that detail to that surface. So once we have this and you have a specific pattern, and you can use any image, right? Um, I'll go to the height map, hit open. And I'll select this and right click on the material and go to assign two objects. So as you can see, it just applies it um, without, you know, without doing any UV mapping or anything. So this is just how the texture comes in. If you want to change that, we can go here to our properties and go to our texture mapping tab. And we can use either spherical, uh, box mapping, for this one, it would actually be cylindrical. So I'll do the center point, or I can just do bounding box, but we'll do this. And I'll hit enter. And also, let's see here, we can see the mapping and stretch this out to, to be whatever we want. So let's go here. But that's a pretty regular pattern. Now this is not the actual displacement map that I'm going to place, but once you have the UV mapping fixed, then we can then our UV mapping is ready for us to do our displacement. I wouldn't do displacement before this, and that's because when you do displacement, it actually takes a lot of um, computer work, and it's better to take care of the UV mapping using just a simple texture that you have on a surface. So with that being said, let's go ahead and go to our displacement tab. So on that, at the end of that row here, um, the third before last, we have displacement. And this is where we can pick that same texture using the plus sign. So you're gonna go here to displacement, drop down menu. We're gonna go to our plus sign and go to bitmap texture. We are going to do the same one. Now nothing's gonna happen until you turn it on. So let's go ahead and turn this on. And you'll see that it actually starts deforming the geometry. 
Now this is not enough, so let's go ahead and increase it to like five. And as you can see now, it's really taken care of uh, the displacement there. So let's go ahead and actually uh, go to very high. And if we actually go to shaded mode, you'll see that we have all the detail there. Now, for some reason, the displacement map is not really lining up exactly with our UV map, but it's close enough. Now, if this is not the mapping, it's upside down, we can go in here and change that information. So let's go in here and let's go to edit. And we can flip over this texture in here. Let's go rotation, 180. And then hit OK. And that should update. Now, we have it at very high with 5 millimeters. Um, and this is in millimeters. So that is why when you do 5, it's going to be 5 millimeters. It's going to be dependent on the units that you're using. Now, as you can see, we have all of that detail that's been that's going to show and we can we can also decrease that offset if that's a little bit too drastic. Now that we have this, as you can see, when I select it, it's still previewing the cylinder before. So what I want to do is actually turn this into a mesh because right now it's not a mesh right i can take this and turn it off and it's still that cylinder so it's just applying this displacement map right on top it's not actually creating it and that's good because it allows you to <laughs> basically preview it and not have it take up so much space but once you do figure out if this is what you want we can actually select it and go to extract render mesh it's going to take a little bit of time for it to calculate all that information and you'll see that you'll have this left over and what i like to do is just move it to the side and what you'll be left over with is the actual mesh so this is an actual let's go here so i'll take this one and i'll turn off the displacement and on this one I'll go ahead and zoom in and you'll see how much, how dense this mesh really is. And it has all that information baked into it. And if we go here into rendered mode and we take off the material, because I think it's overlapping the material. Let's go to material here and go to use layer material. And so you can see we have all of that mesh information here. And if we render it, it'll look very high quality because it's actually displaced mesh. After this, there's another thing we need to do. We'll select this and go to reduce mesh. This is going to help a lot because it'll reduce the mesh. I like to do it by three quarters. Um, we, we can do like 70%. Hit OK, and it will. We will lose a little bit of quality, but if we're doing 3D printing, that's you probably wouldn't see that amount of information, and this will make it a lot easier for you to work with. Um, so it's going to reduce, take a little bit of time, and I'll show you uh, what it looks like at the end. So after the reducing the mesh, this is what it looks like, and I'll go to shaded mode, select this, and go to display, and I have my mesh wires hidden so i'll show that again and see that it's reduced quite a bit and it helps a lot for printing but we still have most of the geometry baked right into our mesh now there's another thing we need to do let's go to shaded mode and i'll turn off mesh wires and i'll select this and go to rebuild 
mesh normals. Cool. So this is an open mesh. What we can do is close it down. One way to do that is duplicating the edge. So duplicate mesh whole boundary. And when you click on that edge, it'll create this line. And we'll do the same thing for the bottom. Now we can do mesh plane, let's see, planar mesh. And that's going to do a planar surface using a mesh. Must be a closed and planar. So what it's saying that this is not a planar uh, top. So what we can do is actually create a plane at the bottom. Actually, let's do this again. We'll do a mesh plane. We can do this in top view, make it a little bit easier. And then on the side view, we can do a copy. So I do Alt to create a copy by moving the gumball. Something, so I'm just trying to intersect it and making sure that at least I have everything intersecting that mesh. Then we can do mesh split. I'll select this and we'll split it using these two. It'll take a bit to split the mesh and then we can delete the top and the bottom. Now we can do that trick again. So duplicate mesh whole boundary. And we can do mesh planar. Or what is it? Planar mesh. Yep. Same thing at the bottom. And let's select those and join them together. So it says joined into one open mesh. And if that's, uh, let's take a look at the top view here. And I'll go to zero. So I'll create a circle, or I can even do a cylinder starting at zero, going all the way out to here. And when we go to perspective, we can push this up like this. And let's actually move this up also. And let's isolate it so we can do a fillet edge of the bottom edge. So let's do five. And now let's turn this into a mesh. And I'll delete that original and do an isolate so we can bring everything back. Now what I'm going to do is let's see if this works. So we'll do mesh boolean difference. We'll select this one. And if everything works correctly, there would be a subtraction between this and this and it actually didn't work and it actually worked for a different one that I did, but if it doesn't work this way, Let's go back and see if the issue is when you do the fillet edge. So let's turn this into a mesh. And let's isolate everything again and show it. And now let's take this and do mesh Boolean difference with this one. Yeah, it still did that. So in this case, that didn't work. Um, there are other ways in which we can create like an opening on the inside. But the important thing is that you get the idea of how we can take this and actually deform it and make it look very high quality. So let's go here to rendered mode. And I'll go to a preset of the video, the previous video that I did, and I'll open up that preset and render the object.
So that was one that I did before that did work. Um, and let's see what it looks like with this one. So I just did a quick render preview and this is what it looks like. Um, all of that information is in there and it looks uh, really good. Now I could kind of increase the brightness and stuff like that for this, but I just wanted to show you that trick that is really critical if you're trying to add a lot of detail, uh, especially if you're 3D printing, doing CNC, or just creating 3D models. So if you have any questions, let me know. Um, I'll have more videos similar to this one in the future, so make sure to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.